Hi, how are you? This is Sarah from the Serenity Reiki Clinic. One of the biggest questions I get asked at the clinic is, well, <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, followed by, were you born with the ability to do what you're doing with the Reiki? Were you born with the abilities that Reiki give you? <laughs> it's kind of a, a weird question, you know? Uh, and the answer is no. Reiki by definition is something you have to be attuned to by a Reiki teacher. But just because you were not attuned to Reiki doesn't mean that you don't have other intuitive gifts. See, most healers use a whole toolbox full of these gifts. And I thought today we would discuss the five most common types. Yeah? Specifically, I wanted to talk to you about the five big C's. Now, there are more C's, but they overlap, and some are more rare abilities, too. And maybe that'll be for another video. <laughs> we'll see, okay? But before we go very far in, um, I think we should discuss the stigma of hearing, seeing, and sensing things that others can't. If you are hearing voices that tell you to hurt yourself or others, please seek medical attention. Okay? Spiritual work is not always pleasant, but you will never be instructed to hurt yourself or others. Yeah? And I care about you and I want you safe. Okay? So when in doubt, be cautious and seek help. Yeah? Okay, these are natural, normal gifts that most people are born with, and for some, they stay through childhood and beyond. Being spiritually intuitive is something that you can develop and learn to use as it was meant to be. Now, I'm speaking today mainly on my own personal experience and, of course, the experiences I have learned and witnessed from teachers, friends, and students over my lifetime. Everyone experiences life differently, like I say, what I have personally witnessed, seen, and experienced. So, like I say, mostly everyone is born with some gifts. For most people, these gifts are shut down during the ages of 12 to 20. Usually as puberty sets in and our views of the world and our place in the world changes. So sometimes, yeah, it's hormonal and sometimes it's just turned off or drowned via self-medication in an attempt to fit into society. And there's no judgment with that. It's difficult enough to find your place in society, much less as a wide open empath or psychic. So yeah. Now there are some people that do keep these gifts throughout their lives, but this is actually rare in the Western cultures. Yeah. Although that being said, I have a few students that started with me at the ripe old age of 12 and they have blossomed and really developed these gifts. So yes, it's possible and shout out to them. And maybe one day we can, you know, do a video with them. Okay. Um, if you're not, uh, as lucky as to have a teacher and you lost or shut down these gifts, you may be wondering how you can, reawaken those talents, yeah? Well, a good place to start is to understand what they are and how they are classified. Typically, you will be strongest in one of these big C's or the intuitive senses, but um, the others will likely support you to a lesser extent. So you may not think you have all five, but you probably do. Just one or two that are really strong. For example, I am strongly clairsentient, but this is supported by Clara audience information and to a lesser degree, the other C's. So let's identify the top five different methods of receiving information, either intuitively, aka psychic abilities, or from spirit, also known as mediumship abilities, okay? The five intuitive senses are, obviously, the most well-known is, of course, clairvoyance, which means literally clear seeing. It can be divided roughly into three classes, precognitive, which is the ability to perceive or predict future events, retrocognitive, which is the ability to see past events, and remote viewing, the perception of contemporary events happening outside the range of normal perception. So yeah, that's a lot right there, isn't it? Um, you may have one or all three of these abilities, and you may see things that actually manifest physically, people, objects, places, ghosts, etc., or images in your dreams, also, like I say, known as precognitive. Mostly, though, clairvoyants will see images in their mind, and sometimes you may hear us refer to it as seeing in the mind's eye or seeing with the third eye. So you can have one of these things and be considered to be clairvoyant, okay? I'm not saying you have to have all of them. Um, and so I know that was clear as mud, right? So 
<laughs> so here's a little bit more. You may be clairvoyant if you have a very active dream life, if your dreams are coming true, if you're dreaming actual events that do happen. And this is actually pretty common. I get asked about this a lot for people that do have reoccurring dreams or dreams that, that are predictive. Or if you communicate and speak fluently with others to others in metaphors. And also if you see things out of the corner of your eyes, perhaps are a lucid dreamer. You see colors, shapes, objects, or pictures when you close your eyes for sleep or meditation. Or you have begun or are already seeing sparkly lights, flashes of lights, or something along those lines. Now, these abilities can be enhanced in many ways, and there are exercises to help you develop this gift. So depending on where you are with it, you may just be seeing sparkly lights and nothing else, or you may be having more of this go on. So we'll talk more about that in later videos. Let me go on to the next C, right? Clara audience. Do you know about that one? It literally means clear hearing, and it is the ability of perceiving, as if by hearing, what is inaudible. So interesting, right? You can hear messages either audibly inside your head or in your mind. For most people, the messages they receive are more telepathic, meaning that spirits or guides or other beings will converse with you via thought. Now with this method, you can speak to spirits in your mind and they will often reply. I have heard cases of people actually waking up because someone is talking to them, thinking someone is in the room. So sometimes they hear the voices outside of their head while others hear or other times they hear it directly in their mind as if they were say on the phone with somebody. So you may be Clara audient if, if you often talk to animals or plants and feel they are communicating with you. You may be Clara audient if you've ever felt like you've received telepathic information from someone, heard someone's thoughts, if you hear knocking, footsteps, creaking noises, or hear whispers, noises such as background static, talking, or like a radio in the distance where you hear music, but it's just so far away you can maybe just barely hear the melody. Usually people with Clara audience also give profoundly helpful advice, and then they turn around and immediately forget what they said. Kind of end up, you know, where did that come from, right? You may also be Clara audience if you hear ringing, buzzing, or popping in your ears for no apparent reason. So obviously if you're driving over a mountain or flying and you hear popping, yeah, but no, setting, say, in your living room, okay? Clara audience is something that people don't talk about a lot because, like I said earlier, the stigma of hearing voices. Clara audience, though, is so much more than that. The main difference between being Clara audient and having for instance, a mental illness is actually quite clear. Clara audience and mid mental illnesses are both consistent of voices, but the similarity stops there. The Clara audience mediums learn to control these voices. Spirit voices tend not to be constant, but instead they're more brief and to the point. And sometimes it's only one word. Generally, they don't prevent you from from functioning in day-to-day -day life, and they would never suggest harmful behavior. Spirit voices are generally safe, gentle, rational sometimes more rational than our own even, and usually quite compassionate. With Clara audience, you will have the gift of clear speaking as well, meaning you can speak, share, and channel the messages you hear from spirits to others. So that's something that a lot of people want to be able to do is to hear spirit and hear spirit clearly to give messages and pass messages on to other people. Clara audience is considered a rare gift and you should treasure the ability if you have it. The next one is clairsentience, and it's translated as clear feeling. Quite possibly, it's the most underestimated of all the psychic gifts and abilities. It means, as I said, clear sensing. So it's the ability to feel the present, past, or future physical and emotional states of others without the use of the normal five senses, which is Pretty darn amazing, isn't it? Psychics who are clairsentient are able to retrieve information from houses, public buildings, out the outside area, landmarks, objects, you name it. It's the ability to feel strongly and sense the emotions and feelings of people, animals, spirits, and once again, places, buildings, yeah, around them. So you feel the emotions of others both in your heart and in your body. And it's pretty likely that you can also feel spirits and entities around you. If this resonates with you, you may want to look into what it means to be an 
empath. Now, you can be clairsentient and not be an empath or vice versa, but it's usually the two go hand in hand, okay? And there's actually a whole lot of different levels to being an empath and different types of empaths as well, but that's for another video. You may be clairsentient if you're a highly sensitive person. And I did a video, it may be on the other channel, about um, ways to survive if you are a highly sensitive person or an empath. I'll put a link to it in the comment sections if I can remember, okay? You may be clairsentient if you're a highly sensitive person or if you are sensitive to the vibe of places or people or if you have a strong sense of sympathy or empathy for everyone, including animals. You go places where large crowds are and you have an unexplainable emotion or physical reaction. <laughs> You go to places, uh, landmarks. Uh, the first time Lady Roxana, who you've seen on the webinars, was in England, she asked me if I would go with her on the Jack the Ripper tour in London. And I went, are you kidding me? Of course not. I don't want to feel that. And she's like, no, no, it'll be fine. So guess who got sick from standing on the spot where they found the victims? Yes, Lady Roxana. So that's the way this works. It's not always something that you you can prepare for or know that you're going to be running into something or having some sort of reaction like or have weird experiences. When people visit your home, you are likely to be able to feel the change in the area of your home, feel the energy and also pick up what the people are feeling. And you know how people feel without speaking to them. As I said before, you can generally feel the presence of spirits. And you feel other people's pain, perhaps even the location of the pain on their body. And sometimes it gets intermixed and you end up feeling it as if it was your own. And some psychics with this ability can also feel the spirit world. To be quite honest, clairsentient is actually very common as a psychic gift, but it's something that's generally overlooked because we activate it without conscious awareness. And many of us have the ability to use it without even realizing what's happening. For instance, many medical professionals find it easy to diagnose sick patients with very little information, just as many counselors simply understand the person that's come to them for help and know intuitively, instinctively, whatever words you want to use, what they need. I, I've heard many people describe this ability as instinctual and being as easy as breathing. There are many levels to it, but maybe <laughs> that'll be for another video. The next big C is Clara Cognizant. I find that 40-45% mm, of the people I read for are primarily claracognizant. And it's common, but it's really not all that well known. Well, not, compa not compared to clara audience or clairvoyance. But um, most people think of visions and clairvoyance when they hear the word psychic or intuitive. But claracognizant is clear knowing. So you have clear feeling and now clear knowing. It's one of the primary intuitive modalities people use to get knowledge and information information psychically. Some people also refer to it as intuitive knowing, which like I say is similar to the one we just discussed about clear feeling, but it's not a full body sensation. So claircognizant or clear knowing refers to the ability to simply know something, to be true even without supporting knowledge or logic or reason. You just know it. Usually the knowledge often comes to you spontaneously, but you know in your soul it's 100% accurate. Sometimes this information can come in the form of facts and figures. Other times it comes in the form of simply knowing the truth of a situation. You may be clear or cognizant if you often receive the answers to something that you were wondering, seem seemingly from out of nowhere. Yeah, you may have a sense of inner knowing when something is not a good idea, despite the fact that it may be perfect on the surface. And it's common for you to get creative, inspirational, and beneficial ideas completely out of the blue. Most people that are claircognizant tend to have an unquiet mind with ideas swirling around and popping in, especially at work or when they're involved in creative projects. And usually they work in the creative fields too. Um, you may also have the ability to do automatic writing. The difference with this one is without explanation, you know something with accuracy. You know when someone is telling you the truth or not with 100% accuracy. Claircognizant is the intuitive ability basically of clear knowing 
knowingness. Most people will identify themselves with one of the other C's. However, claircognizant is a valid and powerful modality because it's the least likely to be misinterpreted. With clairvoyance, for example, you may receive a metaphorical image or a scene and have to interpret what it means, yeah? Much like interpreting a dream. And a lot can go wrong if you misinterpret the information. With Clara audience, you may hear something like, don't get on the freeway, but not know why. So it's easy for logic to tell you that you're imagining things. Has this ever happened to you? With clairsentience, it can be extremely difficult to interpret bodily sensations and translate that to a clear action to take. And also you may be wondering if it was really you or you're feeling something else from somebody else. With claircognizance, the information comes through so powerfully and with such certainty that logic is kicked to the curb and you know. For example, have you or somebody you know ever made statements like this? I don't know why I left work so suddenly. I just knew I had to get out of there. Yeah. Or I don't know what it is about this guy. I just don't want to be around him. Or I just knew she was going to be in an accident today. I don't know how I knew. I just knew. Have you heard people talk about things like that? Where there's no rhyme or reason and no logic that you can point to. And there's no information gained through regular channels. Yeah, just pure knowledge downloaded directly into your brain with no interpretation required and no room for misunderstanding. So see how clear this is? People who are trying to work with their guides and work with their intuitive abilities will often come to me and go, hey, Sarah, I'm getting one word or I'm getting this feeling. What does it mean? And then we spend sometimes hours trying to translate it. So this is a very cool gift to have. But like I say, each of us has a combination of the above abilities and they vary in strength and we of course, can choose to develop them at any time. But for many, these abilities and skills have been blocked over the years. And okay, how do they get blocked? By layers of limiting beliefs, toxins, denial, I mean, negative thinking, the list goes on and on. But the blessing is that you have the ability at any time to start working with them. And with attention and persistence, these abilities can be activated, developed, and awakened because everyone has the ability. In the next video, I'll probably talk about some ways to develop these gifts if that's what you guys want to hear. So leave me a comment if that's what you want to hear, okay? And also, I'd be interested to know what your gifts are. Put that in the comment box. I'd like to read that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Reiki blessings. Bye-bye.